welcome to the 2006 Office Olympics. Here at the Sir John Harvey Jones Memorial Olympic Business Park in Stratford. A lot of controversy this year, as I'm sure you all know. This office was meant to cost £50 per square foot to hire, but costs have spiralled to nearer the £3 billion mark. But I'm sure that'll be value for money tonight as you join us for the final of the cross-office sprint on office chairs propelled only by office equipment. It's a simple game with simple rules. If it's in an office, you can use it. If it's not, you can't. I think that was clear from what I just said. <laughs> Let's take a look at the finalists. In lane one, we have Britain's own Keith Prendergast, and he's going to be propelling his office chair using the classic office fan. In lane two, it's the Russian Sergei Bochkov. He's gone with the shredder at the other end of the room and the massively long tie trapped in it. In lane three is the Belgian, Hergé Van Damme, and he's got a stapler and the office plant sprayer, and he's facing backwards. Clearly utilising Newton's third law, he's hoping the light aluminium staples and fine watery mist will propel him to an equal and opposite victory. But there is every chance that it won't. And finally, in lane four, we have the American, Whip Slipscomb, who's using a rocket. Yes, that's Professor Whip Slipscomb of the Massachusetts Institute of Rockets and Rocketry. The rules state that you can use whatever's in your office, and Whip's office is, well, it's full of rockets. I, I can see the starter getting ready. Put your marks, set, you're fired. Ah. He's fired someone from accounts, and the race is underway. And amazingly, the Americans haven't won yet. Professor Slipscomb is struggling to get his rocket going, which means that the Brit is in the lead. Yes, Prendergast has moved smoothly through the fan speeds from one to two, clearly saving three for the sprint finish. And he's going very nicely. Meanwhile, Hergé Van Damme in lane three is in all sorts of trouble because the plant sprayer is far more powerful than the stapler. And he's just spinning round and round in very slow circles. Oh, 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 he's got dizzy and sick. He's fallen off the chair and his race is over. And disaster for Keith Prendergast. He's forgotten the extension lead and his plugs come out, leaving him coasting to a halt halfway down the course. He's trying to use the fan as some kind of clumsy oar, but it's just pitiful to watch. Meanwhile, plug trouble of a different kind for Sergei Bochkov. He just can't get the two-pin Russian plug into the three-pin British plug socket, without which he can't switch the shredder on, and he's going nowhere. They'll have to send someone down to Dixon's for one of those international travel adapter kits. I think his race is over. The news of the Americans is bad, as they still haven't got the rocket lit. But wait, extraordinary scenes here. One of the Russians has used his trademark Eastern European metal teeth to form an electrical bridge between the cable and the socket. His mouth's basically on fire, but the shredder is going, and Sergei is eating up that track as quickly as the shredder is eating up his tie. And surely, failing a miracle, he is going to win this race. But there goes Whip Slipscomb, the rocket has fired, and the American has won this race, and a new personal best time, too fast to physically measure. Sadly, his plan to break using post-it notes seems to have failed, <laughs> and he has been punched straight through the office wall and into a low-earth orbit. So, we have an extraordinary result here. Gold for Whip Slipscomb, and as his head hits the shredder, oh. silver for the strong-necked Russian, and everyone else is just a big bronze loser. <laughs> That's all from here, but now over to the internal staircase for the tea tray luge. Ooh, nasty. 